So on the night of the election, I think you wrote a column. Um, and you called the result of the election a disaster for the c country, but you also were very early in writing about not normalizing uh, the new president. And you seem uh, then to have marked um, the departures that, he, that his election represented for you. You've covered authoritarian governments abroad. Um, how would you describe the departure that President Trump represents in, in your thinking about coverage and your thinking about voices? Um, how dangerous uh, do you regard him uh, to be? Well, when Donald Trump was a uh, real estate figure and also a, a major figure in the New York jokescape, who cared? I mean, he was great for business for the New York Post and Spy Magazine, and he was one of those outsized figures like, you know, George Steinbrenner or, you know, a New York character. And it was relatively, relatively harmless. What do we have here? We have a, 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 a f in, on the first, in the first stream, you have someone who comes out of, um, an American stream of politics that we've seen many times before. Nativism, xenophobia, uh, racism, maybe above all racism, um, misogyny. There, the, these things have been announced in American politics before, whether it's the know-nothings um, or the longs in Louisiana. All kinds of demagogues have appeared on the American scene right-wing populism, as, um, as John Judas really makes very clear in a, in a short but excellent uh, book on American populism and differentiates between right-wing populism and American populism, this notion of populism that emphasizes an other, uh, African Americans, women, whoever it might be, whoever might be the enemy, we've seen that before in American politics. We've never seen it in the White House. So that, to me, represents something, use whatever word you like, but exceptional, dangerous, worthy of uh, the deepest level of, of concern. That's one thing. An attitude toward the Constitution, I think, as Jelani Cobb was, was describing in the panel uh, before this discussion, um, seems um, tenuous at best as well. I, look, I wish the piece that I wrote on election night, which had an element of, I hope, analysis and description, but also an element of emotion, I wish I had been completely and utterly wrong. As a citizen, as a human being, as an American, I wish between November 8th and right this day, I, it, I had been proven completely and other, utterly wrong, and Donald Trump was merely a... Republican conservative of some variety. I, I'm going to say this, this may be shocking to you, but I think the least, um, the most normal thing he's done at this point, even though the seat was stolen by McConnell and, 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 and friends, was the appointment of the Supreme Court uh, judge that he's put forward, Gorsuch. I mean, I, he's not my cup of tea. He's not what I, I want to see. He's going to do things in the Supreme Court that, just as, a, as an individual with a, with a point of view in the world, um, I'll find, uh, let's just say, hard to swallow. But swallow it I will because he's qualified in the standard sense. I mean, you know, I hope there's a battle on the Hill. I hope we find out a lot more about him and all the rest. That's in the realm of normality. Calling the press an enemy of the American people the creation of a nativist uh, fervor, the appointment of Steve Bannon to be your main uh, counselor on so many things, an inaugural address that sounds more appropriate to the statehouse steps of Baton Rouge in mid-century than to uh, Washington in the 21st century, that seems to be not normal. And so, I, I believe somebody else was saying this prior, so to take a, a, when he goes in front of the uh, joint session of Congress and gives a speech and fire does not come out of his mouth, 
and we treat this like Lincoln's second inaugural, <laughs> that to me is, is, is a, uh, uh, a, danger, a dangerous moment in normalization. It's interesting that that moment was followed in about 25 seconds by blockbuster stories about the, what you know, is loosely being called Russiagate. Um, so I, I don't think it's going to settle down. Um, and as much as we don't necessarily enjoy uh, living such political lives <laughs> uh, where you, you eat both have to turn on the news and don't want to turn on the news, uh, such is our fate at the moment. So on the subject of his relationship with the media, I've, I've never met him. I, I read that he came to Condé Nast and met with editors. Um, he did. There was that transcript of his roundtable with the New York Times when he called it a great American institution uh, before he called it evil uh, mm -hmm. this week. He does seem, uh, from, you know, from a distance, it seems like someone who really needs and wants. He contains multitudes. Yes. Yeah, well, <laughs> but he wants the media's approval. Uh, he seeks it out. He's always been on the phone to reporters. Oh my he, God. Well, sometimes you know, so he's on the phone to reporters as an anonymous source yes. under another name, yes. which, which makes his critique of anonymous sources hilarious, were it not so tragic. I, um, yeah, there has always been a neediness and, and the sense about Donald Trump that one of the central components of his, and I don't want to you know, have cheap psychology here, but it's, well, clearly one of his, his greatest obsessions is what do you think of me now? How, you know, enough about you, what do, what do you think about me? This is, it, it's, it's a, a neediness that makes, you know, any athlete or show business person that I've ever encountered seem modest by comparison. And I'm not, it, and, and look what it's followed. I, I mean, Barack Obama was not without ego, I can, I can tell you. I, I think his, but it was an ego of a mature, um, self-possessed kind. Self-possession is not what's, what's here. Um, it, there's a, again, I'm, I don't, I don't want to say this just to be flippant and snide. It, it matters. It matters in the conduct of affairs of state, how he behaves, what's in his head, what he's thinking about at any given moment. He gives a press conference before meeting with Benjamin Netanyahu, which is very, very unusual. And at, one, and at one point, he says, one state, two state, I mean, it sounded like Dr. Seuss. <laughs> that is not the way, that's outside the boundaries of what I would consider um, presidential behavior. When, when you have a situation in which George W. Bush goes on the Today Show and speaks up for American constitutional values and the importance of a free press, I almost wanted to weep with gratitude. <laughs> and that's not normally my emotion when it comes to George W. Bush. So this is not normal. And I, I, it, it's not, I don't wish for this. 